Hi and welcome to the Belfry. You've joined me on the par 5 third hole here on the Brabazon Golf Course. My name is Chris Ryan and in this video we're talking short game and we're talking how you can play a bump and run when you're faced with a situation very similar to this one. Just before we get started, you should have in the corner of the screen the details for my social media accounts. So if you don't already, then please go ahead and follow me on those. So let's talk briefly about the situation that I've got in front of me. I have got somewhere in the region of about 25 to 30 yards to the flag. 50% of that is this kind of fringe grass. And then I've got the green. I've got a little bit of an upslope to the green and the green then slopes quite a bit from right to left. Now, this shot option, the kind of low bump and run, is going to be a great option for you if you don't have a lot of confidence in your short game. You're not particularly good with your wedges at flying that ball through the air. And certainly we would see this a lot from the golfers who are you know, high teens, certainly into the 20s in terms of handicaps. If you watch any golf on TV, whether that's ladies tour, European tour, PJ tour, seniors tour, you will see most of the golfers out there choosing one of their high lofted clubs. They'll throw the ball some 70, 80% of the distance, a little bit of spin, and they're very, very good at this shot. However, they are extremely highly skilled. If you don't feel that you can play that shot, play the one that we're gonna talk through today, but in practice, Use those more lofty clubs, try and get more comfortable with those. But if it's not that point yet, go for this bump and run because it's going to be a lot safer. So I've selected an eight iron. Something around that area will be good. Maybe a seven iron, eight iron, something like that. Something which has certainly got significantly lower loft than your most lofted wedge. And the idea really is to get this ball pretty low, landing closer to you and then releasing out and using the contours of the ground to allow that ball to finish close to the hole. So there's three things that we're going to try and look at which are going to help you play this shot a little bit better. The first thing is if I was to take my normal address for this eight iron, I would like you to stand a little bit closer to the golf ball. Now if we're going to stand closer to the golf ball we probably need to raise the handle up a little bit to give ourselves that little bit of extra room. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the handle up and walk in much closer. What that does is it makes my club path a lot closer to zero for a longer period of time. And that's going to help me achieve a better direction and it's going to help me achieve a slightly better consistent contact on the golf ball. So the first thing we're going to do is just stand a little bit closer and raise the handle. The second thing I want you to do is try and play the golf ball pretty centrally in your stance. You'll notice that it's pretty close to being in the middle of my heels and the ball is pretty close to being underneath the zip on my top here. Notice how I've got the handle forwards, but it's not significantly forwards. We certainly don't want to do anything here too extreme. We don't want the hands way extremely forward. We don't want the ball extremely far back. We don't want the weight extremely far forward. We're trying to do things quite subtly. Ball middle, feet close, handle slightly forwards. This is going to mean that my club's interaction with the ground is a lot more predictable and a lot less sort of heavy if you like. What we're going to start to find if we have the handle forwards, the weight forwards, is we start to get the golf club traveling quite steeply into the ground and that is not going to be a great feeling for you. That's when you're going to start to pull up out the way, you're going to start to flick the wrists at it, all those kind of things. Third thing is all a little bit about the technique and I want you just to feel that the club head and the body turn are matched. When I say body turn we're talking hips and chest as well. So I'm not going to play this shot with my arms and my wrists and unfortunately this is possibly the most common fault that we see is that golfers tend to use a lot of wrists not a lot of body pivot i want you to feel as if you're rotating your chest and your hips back and that is what is causing the golf club to move certainly as i do this i'm feeling that there's a little bit of wrist action i'm not trying to firm those wrists up too much but i'm certainly feeling that my pivot is controlling this movement more than anything else those are our main points. If we can do that and spend a little bit of time practicing this first, we should find that it's a relatively consistent shot and a good shot option when you're faced with a situation like this one. Right, let me go ahead and have a go. So there's quite a bit of break. So I'm gonna to have to go, you know, some, some 10 feet out to the right. See if we can get this ball on the ground and rolling out somewhere near the flag. Okay, 
It's just rolled on a little bit, but that's not too bad. That's just gone a little bit past the flag, but you can see how the flight was very low. Never really run the risk of hitting that way too long or way too short. It was never going to be getting away from you too much. It was quite predictable. Use the contours of the ground, and they say a little bit of practice, you should get quite competent at that shot. And suddenly when you're in this situation, you're hopefully going to leave yourself a much shorter putt for your next shot. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that video is going to help you, help you. Something practical that you can take to the course next time you go and play. Click the thumbs up if you did like the video. Any comments you've got, you can leave those in the boxes down below. And of course, if you don't already, please subscribe to my channel. There is a link in the description box down below. It will allow you to get access to all the videos that are on there. And it means you won't miss any of the new ones that are going up each week. Thank you again for watching and hopefully we'll see you back here again soon.